Ducks, geese, and swans are a large, diverse group. They all have webbed feet which aid in swimming, and indeed, most of them spend much of their lives on, in, or near water. Many species have a classic rounded duck bill, but others do not. The geese, for example, have a thick-based, more pointed bill, often used for grazing on land. Male and female geese look alike. Young birds may be somewhat differently patterned than adults. Most goose species are gregarious. Many fly in long lines or V formations, calling loudly as they go. Honking flocks of Canada geese, in particular, have long been associated with wilderness, migration, and the changing seasons. But at present, introduced flocks of non-migratory Canadas throng golf courses and parks, sometimes becoming a nuisance. Snow geese come in two color morphs, the standard white, or a dark gray form commonly called blue. The smaller Ross's goose also comes in white or blue, but dark morph Rosses are quite rare. Morphs are permanent. An individual bird is either white or blue, or an intergrade between the two, for its entire life. Swans are huge all-white swimmers, using their long necks to reach aquatic plants in deep water. Mute swans, native to Europe but released into parks here, are not truly mute, but they are not as vocal as our indigenous swans, like these trumpeter swans. The whistling ducks are distinctive. Found mainly in the south, they are more closely related to geese than to other ducks. Their name derives from their whistling calls. Whistling ducks often perch in trees, at times even on power lines. The ducks are a varied lot, with about three dozen species breeding in North America. Most show obvious sexual dimorphism. Males look different than females. Males, or drakes, are in their showiest plumage in winter and spring. In summer, they undergo a rapid molt, which leaves them looking more camouflaged, like the females or hens. This brief dimming of pattern and color in male ducks is referred to as eclipse plumage. One useful way to start learning ducks is to divide them by their feeding habits. Dabbling ducks feed from the surface of the water by tipping up. If they submerge at all, their buoyancy quickly brings them bobbing back into view. They may also forage on land. The dabblers include familiar species such as mallard, shoveler, pintail, and the teals. Dabbling ducks are dimorphic in more than their colors, with females often giving louder quacks than their mates. Compare this hen mallard call to that of a drake. The diving ducks do just that. They undertake often lengthy dives in search of prey, propelling themselves with their powerful feet. Ocean-going members of this group, including scoters, eiders, and the long-tailed and harlequin ducks, spend most of their lives along the coast, but breed primarily on tundra ponds or in rushing streams. The so-called bay ducks of the genus Athea, the scop, redhead, canvasback, and ringneck duck, are more likely to be found in sheltered coastal bays or freshwater than open ocean. Many of them nest in the prairie pothole region of the Great Plains. Mergansers have odd, skinny bills with tooth-like serrations for gripping fish. The ruddy duck and the tropical masked duck are small divers that specialize in small ponds. They often cock their tails up and are collectively referred to as stiff tails. Another tropical duck, the Muscovy, is found over much of North America as a domestic or feral bird usually showing extensive white mottling or patching on the head and body and red warty skin around the face. A few free-flying, wild-looking Muscovies are found along a short stretch of the Rio Grande in South Texas. At parks, you will often find a hodgepodge of wild ducks, geese, and swans rubbing elbows with domestic waterfowl. Particularly odd-looking individuals may well be hybrids, the ducks, geese, and swans, with their large size, bold patterns, and migratory habits, not to mention their widely prized taste, have held the interest of humans throughout history. Many ardent birders began their interest by observing, appreciating, and learning about waterfowl. <laughs>